Kai Havertz has gone ahead to really green light the proposal of Arsenal here onto the Rukani Media Football. Fabrizio Romano giving us a very huge update about that. There is Niza Kinsella, a Chelsea, a Chelsea correspondent for the, I think it's the evening standard drawing a very good update onto that we are having an update about Declan Rice and obviously there is a certain player <coughs> from the Academy of Arsenal that Arsenal have said no to and they've not renewed his contract and it's gonna head to be shown in the exit door out of the hell end academy welcome to rock and media football and how are you guys and where you're watching us from I know it's really heating up as the first Declan Rice was really rejected Arsenal fans are really not the same. They are really spouting fire, but Arsenal are really prepared to see to it that really make a very good bid that is going to see to it that it puts Declan Rice where he wants to be, and that is Arsenal. Jacob Steinberg revealing to us the admiration of Mikela Tater and <coughs> Declan Rice, and then we are going to discuss lots of things concerning Kai Havertz. Now, where do we start? Smash the like button close to 200 times and don't forget to subscribe. After subscribing, hit the notification bell that will enable you to get notified every time I upload a video onto this channel. Kai Havertz is one of the topics that we have to tackle before we go further. And Niza Kinsella has told us that <coughs> Chelsea are prepared to do business with Arsenal and sell Kai Havertz but are demanding up to £70 million. Pounds. Arteta identified him as a player who could add creativity to his team with Kai Havas on a move to Emirates. Arsenal are willing to match his 250,000 grand per week wages, meaning that Kai Havas earns 250,000 pounds a week and when he comes in at Arsenal, Arsenal has shown him that we are willing to pay that. And you know, there is what we call a contract proposal that includes personal terms that Arsenal have gone ahead to really go ahead and sit down with Kai Havertz with the agent and they've gone ahead to really find it okay to sit it that Kai Havertz joins Arsenal. £250,000 a week meaning that he's going to be the third highly paid player. You know? Why? Bukayo Saka right now earns £290,000 um gabriel jesus 265,000 pounds there comes kai havertz with 250,000 pounds but remember if declan rice happens to come in at arsenal it will make him the fourth highest paid player as declan rice is going to be the most paid player at arsenal with 300,000 pounds a week that is declan rice for you and arsenal are really willing to make him the highest paid player so those are some of the personal terms and Arsenal are really willing to go ahead and obviously make this deal <coughs> gate out of the way and Chelsea are willing to sell and they are flexible to, to really negotiate on the price of Mason Mount. They can really see to it that they really cut this price and I really understand that it's happening on Mason Mount side, sorry, on Mason Mount side and Kai Havert side, you know, putting at that fee, Chelsea knew that no player, no team is going to get you that amount of money in those players even comes to man united going in for mason mount now what chelsea are really working hard for uh, is getting in moise Kessido first i think they are playing the l game and finally they've got into the level of agreeing personal terms with moise Kessido and <coughs> they are talking to brighton i don't know how things are going to pan out but it looks like they've gone ahead to win that they're going to they're going to go ahead and really win that that uh they're going to go ahead and obviously win that part for of them and <coughs> of them and Brighton. So I think they're just buying their time because they want to first get in Moise Kesido, then let Mateo Kovacic, right, go to Man City, Kai Havertz go to Arsenal, and Mason Mount go to Man United. They want to first get theirs, then they let the other ones flow. Because you can't tell me that for a player who is left with just two years on his contract, that is. Uh, Kai Havertz, you're willing to negotiate the fee down and for Mason Mount, you're not willing to negotiate the fee down. So I think they just want to get an assurance from Brighton that they're going to sell the player and to really understand the exact price of the player. Then if at all they are told like 80 million pounds, they'll come in and we tell us no, get us 50 or 60 and they'll tell you the same to United to get them 50 or 60 to get this over the line as it's really standing. So. 
Kai Havertz is really willing to go to Arsenal because Arsenal have accepted to pay him his £200,000 a week. Then there comes Fabrizio Romano. And they said, understand Kai Havertz has given green light to Arsenal to contract bid after positive indications. No problem on personal terms. Arsenal and Chelsea in contact. No chance for £75 million, but Chelsea will be flexible. Bayern informed but still quiet. Real Madrid out. So, I think this should be one of those deals that Arsenal should get out of the way as up as they don't entertain what we call <coughs> the hijack like the one at Rice coming in from City. And we've been told that more other teams are coming in to bid for Declan Rice. And uh, that's why Arsenal find themselves in a very hard situation. So, how do you get this <coughs> out of the way and done and dusted? What you should do is simple. Go all out. Negotiate with Chelsea. Agree on the fee that you're going to get them. And obviously put in a bid. Because the more you take without... The more you put the first bid rejected, second bid rejected, the more <coughs> you give attention to other teams to really get a chance to go in and really get the player. You know, Arsenal is really one of those teams that have gotten a chance that players want to go ahead and play for them. That is it. So, he has gone ahead to green light Arsenal after the contract bid that was put in by Arsenal and obviously they're going ahead to really accept the contract proposal that has been given to the man known as Kai Havertz, the German international. So as it stands, Kai Havertz is really sold on an idea to go and really play for Arsenal. He doesn't want to play anywhere apart from Arsenal as the likes of Bayern Munich came in through, <coughs> Real Madrid came in through, Man City came in through, but they were not serious onto him and it's only Arsenal that have come in through and obviously shown him that we are highly interested in you and we are willing to take you on as a player of the team of Arsenal. And that comes in from a very good boss source coming in from Fabrizio Romano. So he has been lighted Arsenal and has gone ahead to accept what we call Arsenal's proposal bid. You know, even bids, you know, even proposals are bidded. You know, you can you can put in your personal terms. That is a bid. You bid to a player and his agent, they sit down and they say, no, we are not coming to your side. We are not coming your way, right? We aren't coming your way. And that is something special that is coming in from Arsenal to Kai Havertz. And what a reply, meaning that personal terms are not an issue. Everything has been agreed. And here we come to really see how the battle for cutting down the price from 75 million pounds to to 50 million pounds is gonna be in there <coughs> and i've seen arsenal fans complaining about kai havertz but i have a question to ask you before i go to the declan rice story what reason are you giving for not welcoming kai havertz at arsenal you know yet you don't have quality players like kai havertz tell me a versatile player you have at Arsenal that can play from the midfield to all the forward line positions. You know? And I think that's the main reason that's why Mikel Arteta is going to have to pull out of the deal of Moise Kesido because he might have wa wanted to go in for Moise Kesido, right? But when he saw this opportunity of Kai Havertz rising, he said, all right, I can do Declan Rice, I can do Kai Havertz. It will be a very good addition to my team because they've always wanted that forward, you know, who can play as who can play as a right attacking midfielder with the left foot and can as well play as a center forward. For any elite team, you have, you're supposed to be having three center forwards. And in the competitions, Arsenal are really going in, they're going to be needing, needing Kai Havertz a lot to go ahead and really give competition to Bokayo Saka. So, that is it. Coming in from Fabrizio Romano and Ninza Kinsella. Now, we go to the Declan Rice story. Bid, first bid rejected yesterday and Arsenal are in for another one. And we've been told by Jacob Steinberg, Rice admires Ateta's style of football and there will be no issue over personal times. Rice, who became a father last year would prefer to stay in London and be close to his family. He knows, he also knows that he would be a regular starter at Arsenal than at Man City. Obviously, 
when you look at one of those reasons that I've heard some people give that why um, Moise Hido has found it easy to make a decision to go ahead and really play, sorry, and decide to go and play for Chelsea, not Arsenal. The reason is that he has found himself in a position of knowing that at Chelsea he's going to be playing into that double pivot with uh, um, Enzo Fernandez. Yet at Arsenal, it was going to be hard for him to go ahead and obviously be assured of enough playing time as there is Jorginho, there is Thomas Partey. If they get Rice and him, they're going to be four players tussling in for two positions at Arsenal. Something that he doesn't find really elite. But we all know that the fact is Arsenal have gone ahead to pull out. You know, it's the player that wanted, but Arsenal pulled out because they feel like if they get Kai Havertz and Declan Rice, that will be business done in a perfect position or direction. So when you look at Declan Rice, he doesn't want to leave London. You know, he wants to play for Mikel Ateta. Obviously, when you look at uh, him and his chances to start at Arsenal, and uh, Man City, if you have to wear them in, obviously you find it out that it's easy for them, for him to play and start at Arsenal than at Man City. At Man City, they are bringing Kovacic. There is Calvin Phillips <coughs> and uh, Kevin De Bruyne, you know. So, how is he going to fit into that midfield three? Because two of those positions have been already taken. That is, CDM and the central attack midfielder of Kevin De Bruyne. So he'll be only having to he'll be having to tussle it out with Mateo Kovacic. And trust me, Mateo Kovacic is a better midfielder than Declan Rice. So Declan Rice has weighed in and obviously gotten to know that all right. I think it's better for me. I really did the needful and played for the Arsenal side. And secondly, look at Calvin Phillips. Calvin Phillips is a more better player than Declan Rice. But look at what he has gone in through at Man City. His first season has been what we call absolute bonkers. You know, it has been really ugly for it has been really ugly for the English international. And we really know what this means to him. Though though it has gone ahead to really look not all that ashamed, but he has got a shoulder injury, but that injury was done a surgery too and he came back but from january to may i really remember 10 games that calvin phillips has gone ahead to start he only got game he only got enough playing time after after um, city confirmed that we are winning the league you know that's when he started but uh you understand if at all he picks up it might be hard for Declan Rice to play ahead of him because Calvin Phillips is a very, very, very good player that everyone wants to watch. He's a joy to watch and you really understand it very well that he's talented and I believe Declan Rice has gone ahead to look onto all those scenarios, weighed them in and said, I have to go to Arsenal because if, De if Calvin Phillips, a more talented player than I am, who can play in versatile in very many positions. He can play as a CDM, he can play as a central midfielder, he can play as a central attack midfielder, three positions at once. He's not making to that team, then it's going to be hard for me to go into that team. Those City are really trying to work hard on the player's side, but Declan Rice is sold on an idea of really going to Arsenal because he knows he is going to be into the starting 11 of Arsenal. Even if there is part in the midfield or Jorginho, he will be 100% sure that he will be played into what we call the box-to-box -box midfield role that Grant Xhaka has been playing in. And lastly, let's drop this story coming in from the Arsenal side and it's all about Joel Idejo. He's a winger has been released by Arsenal. The club had the option to extend his contract for a further two years, but they have chosen not to exercise it due to the number of players in the current squad academy. And it looks like Arsenal is doing a very huge offload in its academy. And uh, I think most of the players are not being green-lighted to stay by Mikel Arteta because he believes that the academy of Arsenal should be doing better. <laughs> there should be players that should be playing for that team. As Arsenal is fighting to keep the likes of the Moaneris, now, there are those that they want to really get out, and they've shown him the exit door. He's a winger, 
and that shows you there has been bang average for the team of Arsenal. That's why they've chosen not to keep him. If at all he was firing all cylinders and his and his ceiling was really high, they would have gone ahead to really give him an extension of two years. So Joel Idejo, that is the winger, and Arsenal have gone ahead to show him the exit door. And Chris Whitley has gone ahead to bring us that story. So, guys, your thoughts on Kai Havertz greenlighting Arsenal's proposal? I welcome in the comment section below to make about Declan Rice, obviously sold onto an idea to come in and play for Arsenal. And lastly, what do you make about the young star that Arsenal have gone ahead to offload? That is Joel Adejo. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Good morning. And Juma Karim to my Muslim friends, subscribers, and viewers. I'm out.